And uh, this uh, is not necessarily a talk, this is more a performance, and it's titled A Web Page in Free X. It's by Joanna Chico. She's a graphics designer, a researcher, and a performer with a background in, uh, in dance. Thank you. Um, thank you for being here. Um, I'll start by sharing some of these um, choreographic code. Um, yeah, I hope you, you enjoy the dance, um, and there will be time for questions afterwards. First act. Warning. Theatrical actions are not necessary to the performance piece. Avoid if at all possible. Warning two, please switch off your mobile phones. Remove. 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 New sequence or phrasing. Phrase as a metaphor for a long or total duration containing beginning, middle, no end.
eliminate or minimize. Keep mindful or be aware of your breathing. Elements of chance. Juxtaposition of elements under aleatory influence. Chance modifies perception, destroying the idea of sequencing. Beginning, middle, no end. Choreography is the organization of tensions, the tensions and counter tensions. Stop or intensify. Leave the stage.
accumulation superimposition catalytic cyclic body variation accumulation simultaneous accumulation superimposition of fields accumulation not for everything accumulation simultaneous free thing to variation catalytic accumulation catalytic catalytic free thing to variation think all body free thing not for everything accumulation variation variation i think all body free thing free thing in relation of variation catalytic superimposition with rhythms accumulation think all body superimposition not catalytic about think think all body accumulation of variation superimposition think all body repetitive reading it in a catalytic variation and simply simultaneously i think all body Simultaneously, leave the stage. Second act. Pause. The circle suggests the infinity of perpetual motion, repeating itself interminably. <coughs> Momentum or inertia. There are as many spatio-temporal experiences as there are distinct movements. Found movement, ritualistic, repetitive, spatializing time in multi-directions. Multiple speeds and orientations. between geometry and gesture, organizing our vision of the world. Remove.
remove. Breathe. 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 Breathe until it's enough. And rotate. Pause. Leave the stage. Final act. By moving or by opting to remain still, choreography demonstrates how its decodings are not mere conceptual propositions, but actual possibilities for action.
Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for being here until the end uh, <laughs> and not falling asleep and all these things. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm open to questions. I also have some notes with me and I'm happy to share more of these um, yeah, projects and research that I'm doing. So feel free to, yeah, to start with questions and otherwise I can also um, yeah, share more of my choreographic um, ideas. Share your ideas. I will. Uh, <laughs> so this quote you're um, reading uh, is by Steve Volk um, and Michael Klein, also two choreographers. And so for me, choreography really is something uh, that I took to the design and programming world. And I see them now as um, this sort of hybrid language that really helps at, um, yeah investigating what goes behind the interface. So uh, maybe, maybe this is a, just a very basic um, definition. And I'm, I'm, maybe you also know that choreography stands for writing movement. So it is a writing tool, a device, um, and a, a language that has been constructed throughout many, many years. Um, also, it has been appropriated by different people, different movements, different time in history. It has evolved. Um, there is a lot more, also if there's Greek-speaking people in the audience, um, you may also understand there's more nuances. It's not just about um, writing movement, but there's actually traces of other uh, words in the um, definition and the etymology of the word itself, which for me is extremely interesting. In particular, in particularly this notion of um, of a hand, which goes very physically back to the notions of writing and how we started with this uh, technology of writing. But also the notion of space, not as something that is appearing as already defined, but something that we, um, yeah, something that we define ourselves. So, and also the notion of making space. So not space as a given, but space as a construction. Individual, collective, as we might um, take it. So this is pretty much how I, uh, my own sort of formula, um, that I started looking at choreographic languages and programming. Uh, mainly web programming, and do this sort of well. It, it can 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 be a demonstration sometimes, but I try to make it more of a live performance and um, embracing a little bit more the theater or spectacle. And yeah, for me, it's not just um, um, an appropriation or trying to. Um, trying to find ways through, um, through this performative utterance of code, but it's also a way of thinking critically and thinking otherwise, and also listening to other voices. There's been other projects um, on other sorts of dance genres. What you've experienced before was mainly based on postmodern dance, which was um, Originate, it originated in the 50s. Um, you might know some names, uh, for instance, Yvonne Rayner, Merce Cunningham, Trisha Brown, Lucinda Childs. A lot of these voices were also speaking for um, other fights, so women really trying to um, look at their body and their movements and uh, the space and time constructions around them and, and, and having their own uh, perspectives to be um, performed and, and to make that real. And yeah, with, with all these different projects, I, I started collaborating with other choreographers. 
because I have a background in classical ballet and contemporary, which, um, yeah, in itself, these are very specific ways of seeing movement as well. So I learned a lot from other encounters, for example, with uh, Eshko Watchman movement notation or tango, and most recently, Butoh. Mm, a lot of these is actually documented online. Uh, you can see videos from these, but also the source code um, is available on GitHub. Um, but yeah, I could uh, obviously just have the code in itself. But for me, it's also important these moments in which I can perform the code. Um, this is a, a quote that I always like sharing from Francisca Schroeder. And the fact that I'm here and I'm typing and I'm writing these words that I, um, that I make them mine in a way because of merging all these references into the choreographic code that I present, um, this presence on, on stage, but not actually not often I'm on a stage, I can also be among the audience and so on. Um, it makes it v visible a certain kind of physicality, which is often hidden by the screens. So this is one of the motivations why I also started engaging with performance. And um, this other reference from M Miriam van Himschut, sorry if I'm pronouncing correctly, um, so it's a, an, a thought on scores um, and how the flesh uh, is also something dynamic and always in relation with um, the language, with the devices, with the environment, with multiple agents and agencies. So. All of these have been discoveries that I'm happy to share in this forum. Um, but it's also a discussion, it's an ongoing discussion. And I'm, I'm, I like to think of these scores, choreographic scores slash programming scripts as evolving, as um, not, not as static, uh, even though language is, always has a, that quality of trying to remain still. Mm, yeah, so, yeah, I was going to show a few of these projects, but again, I, I do want you to interrupt me, um, but otherwise I will also continue. So, and, and, <laughs> this and one so was, uh, yeah. And, and those who want to interrupt, please just walk to a microphone and uh, we can have your interruption. Um, this was a recent um, experiment at the Internet Moon Gallery. Um, actually, it's, it's a really interesting um, 3D environment and gallery that every, um, every, every X amount of months, I don't, I'm not sure if it's every month or maybe uh, sh uh, bigger periods, uh, hosts artists. Uh, artist works, and in this case, I was um, embedding my code there, and this code would um, basically also be available for anyone who would want to open the web console and try it uh, themselves. And this one was uh, particularly uh, created for Google Maps, and I I did a, a demo with um, the Moon um, for the Internet Moon Gallery. Also, it's not uh, all the time that I'm alone performing. I started new collaborations, and um, yeah, I'm always happy to to collaborate. Uh, some people in the room have been collaborating with me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm also very interested not only choreographer but in somatic practices and uh, theater. Also. Um, Traditionally, I don't know if we can really speak of, of a huge tradition, but live coding um, has a, a strong connection with music and sound uh, production. And I also um, started now a collaboration with Renick Bell, um, which, yeah, you can see um, our platform online. Uh, for for more details, but um, what was interesting was to um, have this dual uh, interface performance in which 
our code interacts and I'm, I actually do interfere with the sound and I have someone interfering with the visuals. It looks like we have a question at the microphone too. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, uh, thanks, for, thanks for this. This was really uh, very moving. <laughs> uh, I've got a question. Um, well, when you circled around us, I felt that this is a um, kind of inviting movement for all of us, like taking us into the circle. And you also put your code on GitHub. And uh, my question is, uh, would you like other hackers to fork the code and uh, maybe to practice this uh, somehow as a movement practice and uh, how you envision this as uh, we probably are not so competent in movement? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, one thing is sure is that we are all in movement, even when we think we are standing still, we're not. So I'm sure um, anyone could actually participate in this choreography. Actually, we're embedded in many choreographies, aren't we? So it's just a matter of experimenting more about um, co-creating other choreographies. And um, I was hoping that someone would fork <laughs> my code on GitHub. So far, it hasn't happened. But please do so. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, next question for microphone number one. Okay, uh, great performance, really like that. Uh, just, I was wondering about the intent. Um, maybe that's a too flat a question, but are you looking for uh, some sort of beauty in, in, in those frameworks, in those visualizations? Are you just looking for your own personal experience of some sort of space that you want to share? Or, or I mean, what's your... Like, in what direction are you going? What, what is driving you there? Yeah, I, I, um, yeah I, I wouldn't really know what to say about beauty. That, that's, I suppose, yeah, that's, that's something else for me. I, I wouldn't uh, think of that while performing. Actually, I do uh, think, though, about aesthetics as something that comes uh, back to the senses and sensorial experience. I think about... Um, movement and, and uh, body and flesh and physicality and sweat and breathing and um, bring that into the space of code and code into the space of everything. I guess we are already in this loop anyways. Um, yeah, I, it, it, I'm not um, really thinking about web design in terms of, of beauty or ugliness or um, no. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, probably last question from microphone number two and please keep it brief uh, question wise. Okay. Uh, this is a very tech savvy audience which lives a lot behind the user interface. Do you feel that tech savvy audiences react differently to these uh, pieces than people who live in front of the interface? Mm, I think we... Uh, I, I had really different comments um, and I heard really different feedback actually. Um, some people, they keep on seeing the same code and only after a while they really realize that there's actually a head and, and a body and, and they actually realize what that means, that we're actually you know, cutting the, the interface in, in these two, uh, in this great divide that we actually have been building history um, on top of. So um, it's quite surprising, actually. I often think that, um, yeah, it's going to be, yeah, no novelty and, and, um, and there's nothing, I'm just building on top of an existing code and interface. But then, eventually, it is possible to read this code otherwise and to, to, to think of things differently. And that's what often happens in, in more tech uh, environments. But also, when it's other environments in which there's less people who know how to code, they also actually, they do start recognizing some terms that appear often when there's errors and so on. And then suddenly they think, yeah, well, actually, um, I see more the cause and effect and, or th there's different findings and experiences, I suppose, in every audience member. Mm. Yeah. Thank you very much. And, uh, well, this is the end of uh, this talk.
Uh, we will continue at uh, 2150 with a uh, talk on media disruption led by the blind. That's about user interface design by blind people for blind people. Uh, very interesting topic. Uh, thank you all for your attention. Um, if you leave, please take your belongings and your trash with you. And preferably also your neighbor's trash. Thank you.